Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Now, a few weeks ago, I reviewed the Reloop tape and I concluded that whilst it is a pretty cool device for actually recording your live mixes, I didn't really think it was the best solution when it comes to ripping actual real vinyl into your computer. I think there are better ways to go about it. And I asked in the video if any of you guys and girls would be interested in some vinyl ripping tips, and it turns out that you are, so hence we have this video today. Now, this is by no means a definitive guide to ripping vinyl. There is no kind of actual answers to this. In many respects, it's you know down to your personal taste and the equipment that you have available, but the key always with vinyl ripping is do it once, get it right the first time if you possibly can, because it is a very time consuming endeavor and you just don't wanna be doing it two times, three times, that's just a waste of time. So here are my six tips to help you improve your vinyl rips. My first tip might seem a bit counterintuitive in a video about ripping vinyl, but that is don't rip it if you don't have to. For most DJs with an average setup, you'll have a hard time ripping in overall better quality than a digital file bought from iTunes or Beatport or wherever, especially when dealing with material that was produced or mastered digitally in the first place. And you might be surprised just how much classic music can be bought in that way. Here I'm going through a pile of year 2000 era house and UK garage, a genre renowned for white label remixes, and out of 52 records in the stack, only 16 aren't available on iTunes. Plus, time is money, and so buying the other 36 tracks for less than a buck each seems like a good investment to me. You can get them even cheaper if you buy compilations. These days, I will only ever rip brand new vinyl-only releases, and often many of those are available direct through the artist or label on Bandcamp, with digital files included. The second tip, and this is about actual ripping now, is to use the shortest signal path possible. If your mixer has a USB output, try and record directly from the channel into your recording software, not the output stage. If you don't have a mixer with USB, always try and go directly through your audio interface rather than through your mixer first. If you don't have an audio interface with a phono level input for a turntable, I'd recommend the Denon DJ DS1 or a Rain SL2 3 or 4. They all have high quality sound and good preamps. Use the highest quality level the interface will allow. Always record in a lossless format, either WAV or AIFF, and keep your levels in check to avoid peaking. Try and avoid walking around the room while you're ripping if you possibly can, and do listen as it's recording to make sure nothing is skipping, but don't have your speakers too loud. Ideally, sit down listening on headphones. Tip three, you may love your butter rugs, I love mine, but they are not the answer for ripping. A friend of mine ripped a bunch of vinyl recently and couldn't understand why some of the BPMs were inconsistent in his files. Turns out his deck had a tablecloth slip mat and two slip sheets underneath it. For ripping, you want something which will totally prevent the record from slipping, keeping it totally locked to a tempo. I use this cork mat designed for audiophile use, but the rubber mat which comes with most tables will work great and even those old thicker slip mats you'd never normally use anymore will do a better job than anything that's designed for scratching. I also use a Master Sounds vinyl weight to clamp the record in place too, but that's not essential if you have a good grippy mat. The fourth tip should be fairly obvious, clean your vinyl. If there was ever a time to make sure your vinyl is scrupulously clean, then before ripping is that time. My cleaning fluid of choice is this stuff by Near Mint Club. It's made in the UK and they have wipes for use on the road as well as the traditional spray. It's readily available in Europe and is coming to the US soon, but whatever fluid you use, make sure you give every record a thorough clean and let it dry properly before you rip. If you have a record which is so bad that no fluid will do the job, get some Gorilla Glue and look up the wood glue cleaning method on YouTube. It really does work. Tip five, buy a new stylus. Personally, I keep this Autophon Gold Concord around just for ripping, and whilst that might be a bit excessive, it's worth having a needle kept in pristine condition dedicated purely to the task of ripping. If you use your day-to-day -day needles, they might be worn in ways you can't really see and will take a fair bit more cleaning to get the best sound. You could even consider getting a dedicated hi-fi cartridge like the Audio-Technica AT95. That's only about 25 bucks and will almost certainly give you better results than a worn out M44-7. Just remember, if you're looking at hi-fi carts, that DJ straight arm tables must be used with spherical styli. Keep the elliptical ones for S-arm decks. And make sure you balance your tone arm correctly. There's never a good time to be rocking the coin on the headshell look, and when ripping, definitely isn't it. 
Which brings me to tip six. And you may have noticed by now how much emphasis I've put on getting a good result during the vinyl ripping process itself. That's because I'm a firm believer in absolute minimal post-processing of vinyl rips. As a rule, the most I will ever do is cut off the start and the end, adjust the level balance between the left and right channels, and bring up the overall level to just below zero. There are great applications out there like Isotope RX, which will let you clean up pops and crackles, but they are expensive, and that's gonna be even more time consuming. From my perspective, I'm actually okay with the odd pop or crackle here and there. You'd hear them if you were playing the actual vinyl at a gig, and it adds a bit of that authentic character. Anything beyond that, like scratches, you'll need to actually re-edit the track in Ableton or something, and that's a topic for another day. So there you go, a few tips from me on achieving high quality vinyl rips. Now, as I said at the start, this is by no means any kind of definitive guide. I'm sure lots of you out there have different methods and ways of working, which may be different or it may be even better than the ones I've described here. So please do let us know down in the comments and share that knowledge with the community so that everyone can archive their precious vinyl in the best possible way. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks and product reviews. I'll see you soon.